So we've gone into P5JS website and you can see the menu here on the left. Just click in editor and here we go. Two functions which tell the computer what to do for us already set up. The first one creates the canvas as it says. So that's just the size 400 by 400 and that function happens once whereas the draw function happens continually so that helps us choose where we want to put our instructions. Now the background colour that's already been decided here is the nice grey there 220 but you could make that a little bit darker by decreasing the value to complete black or let's just go for an even tone grey. There we go. So we want to add into this a circle. Now we're going to extend the function draw because we want to create some interactive art. So what we can do with that is we could make a circle and what it would need to know is where we want to place that so we put the x coordinate say 100 so that's however far from the left of the screen we want it and then the y coordinate and then the, the radius if you like of the circle so let's make a small one 20 and then end that with the semicolon so there we go a little circle or you may prefer to make a rectangle there and that would be need one more argument argument is just the number that comes after the instruction so there we go it's a square at the moment but let's see what that happens if we give it a little bit more on the y-axis so x-axis y-axis depth so there we go there's our rectangle but for this we also want to create some movement so instead of the x and the y position that it's going to be placed at here let's make it equal to where the mouse goes so that will be mouse x and that will be mouse y so here we go our mouse is making it move around you can also draw things like lines and ellipses just by changing the instruction there where it says circle so here we go and it's white at the moment so what I want to do is to fill that with a random color so I'm going to start a variable a global variable white right at the top so global means it affects the whole of this uh, program or instruction shall we say so I just want to create that I want the variable to start with and then I want the circle to be filled with this color so if I make the um, color up here 100 let's see what happens and you can see that the color has changed that of the fill but what I want to do is to create some interactive art as it moves around so to make it more interesting I'm going to add a function because I want the colour to turn random when the mouse is pressed. Now this doesn't need an argument, so empty brackets. The argument is if it needs any data to make the function work. And then open curly brackets. So when it I want it to change the colour to random when the mouse is pressed color which is our variable because its value varies during this program um, it's going to be a random selection whoop, random selection from this number here let's have a look at that, how that goes so every time we click in we're getting a different which is great now remember that setup only happens once, draw happens continually, so it's continually refreshing this background. So if I take off this background there, there we go, 
and you can see the whole thing changes because it's no longer refreshing the background every time that draw is run and draw is run every frame so i think we're getting a little bit closer there to a little bit of abstract art now if we wanted to make this into a monochrome uh landscape then maybe make the circle a little bit smaller so it's more like a paintbrush and then maybe the background color could be a little bit lighter so that it's a bit more nudey and then it could be a little bit more lighter you can kind of make some rocks shapes or and then make the circle even smaller to do some trees so you're getting a lot of variations that you can do with this to bring out moods of perhaps a forest at night where the darkest bit is going a little bit towards the back it's just some ideas there we can start off with. So let's have a go at creating a sense of rain falling on water. This is just a way that we can use the random function to create different shapes and make it a little bit more interactive. So creating a bit of texture for you. So checking out the color that we've got here of our background. That seems okay for now, but what I want to do is create some colour in the bottom half of the screen. So in the draw, what I want to do is add a rectangle whose coordinates start for zero, which is the far left, half the height of the screen, and then the shape of the rectangle is the width of the screen and half the height so that's sort of giving us the water in the second half of the screen and i'm filling that with a sort of pale blue so red green blue would be 150 value and muting it by a factor there of 100. so far so good now i want to create a loop because that is one way that we can actually repeat something without having to keep um, repeating the code or instructions that we have to write. So i is a traditional number, but we have to first of all write let i, whenever you want to make a number in JavaScript, let the integer happen and start off with it equal to one. And so we want to increase that by one every time we loop over printing out a raindrop we're going to put some a series of raindrops falling into this water so a little loop here while i put in brackets while i is less than 10, we're going to have 9 all together, then what we want to happen is we want to print the ellipse, an ellipse to be the shape of a raindrop and it's going to be repeating that around 9 times in the loop. So if you have a look at the loop, all, all we've done is we've made a number i to be 1 and then we've said that while that number is less than 10, so that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then this is what we're telling the computer to do. And while it's doing that, if you like, at the bottom we're also saying add the number 1 to i. So it's going to go right back to the top and do that again, but now this next time i will be 2. Maybe that's a little bit to get your head around if you've not seen it before, but it's just basically we're looping around uh, instructions to repeat them. So let's have a look at the instructions we're giving. We're making an ellipse. Its diameter and is going to be a random number between 0 and 10. Okay. And 
because it's in the draw function, it's going to be repeated over and over again drawing that. Whereas remember, with the setup, it only creates that once. So we should get the flickering of rain. And then we're telling the computer where to position this drop. We're saying we're keeping the height, the Y value, positioning it as half the height of the canvas. But the X value, so that's how far in from the left, we're saying it's 80 times the value of i. So as you can imagine, each time we loop round, as i increases by 1 each time, that's increasing by the value of 80. Okay. So have a look about that. Let's just see if it works. So you can see, because it's in the draw function, it keeps repeating the drawing of it so this random number is pulling different numbers each time so that's why it's changing its shape and looking like raindrops on the water we filled it there with a with a pale blue and so it's kind of interesting but what I also wanted to have a go at to show is if you wanted to be slightly um, add another layer of shapes on it you can repeat this ellipse and because the random number may vary, then you get an, a slightly bolder raindrop on the water. So that's this example here of creating drops. Just by using, let's have a look at what we've done. A random number as the diameter of it, that's less than 10. And we're just moving them over by the value of 80 plus 80 plus 80 because every time we loop around we're actually getting that little bit more um, x value and if you wanted to put a layer lower down then what you would do is repeat the ellipse instruction and then just make the height more as you can see a sort of reflection further down there what you need to do is to go into sketch and Add the folder that you will refer to in your program and then we will need to add the file into here. So if you control click on this, we're going to upload a file. So that's kind of easy. Just drag in the images that you want to. Going to have a walk around a bluebell wood. So in the assets folder, you can see that my four images are, are ready. I'm just going to give them numbers. So here we've got the name of the variable in setup because we want it this to only happen once. We can call it anything, but calling it one image, and we're telling the computer to load the image, and then that's the pathway. Assets, and then once we've gone into assets, we want one JPEG. So at the top of the function, we will declare this as a variable, just something JavaScript likes. So let one image. Now, in order to draw this, and remember the draw function happens continually every frame then we want to write that the image that we're printing here is the same as the variable at the top, one image. That's its position on the screen. So if we move it across, then you can see that's the x-axis increase there. And if we want to rescale it, if you want to make it um, half the width, then that would happen. Um, and more to scale so that it doesn't lose its identity. That's the height there. So you could see that you could position another image here, here, 
and create a really nice collage, create the syntax for the other images that we want to um, add. So these are just the variables that we declare at the start if we're going to bring in something new to the program. And then we would want to let the setup function load this from our computer into its own bank. So it's coming from the assets folder and the name of the file is 2jpeg and we put that into parentheses there. You should add semicolons after all of the lines here in JavaScript. Although I have to say it tends to work in this compiler without doing that, but it's something to worth, worth checking if it's not behaving correctly. by repeating the sequence. All we've done is increase the second image's X factor by 200 pixels and the total width of the screen is 400 so half of that 200. Equally you could just put width divided by 2. That would also work. So we want to print our third image now. So for this one, we want it the same x value, which is flush with the left, and then the height. So equally, we could put 200 in there. So if we run that, hopefully that should work. So I can see I've got an error there. So I described that pathway wrong. So there we go. And so one last image. Collage, but we want this to be starting halfway across the screen for the x value and starting halfway down the screen for the y value, so it's the height divided by 2. And then we put width divided by 2 because we're halving the uh, height and dimensions of the image itself relative to the screen. And don't forget to save your work and to file as you go along and you can also rename your sketches easily too just um, with the on the menu